So what is Gripping Foods with Force? I would say, uh, how would I describe this? Because it's so it's such a strange concept, right? Uh, exactly what the name says. <laughs> that's what <laughs> that's what I would put in the description. Hey, welcome to another episode of Verbally Described Memes, the podcast where I investigate and critically analyze memes, their history, their function, and their position in society. Today is another episode in a series called Account Admin Confidential, where I chat with the people who are behind the meme accounts that create the content that we all enjoy. Meme accounts don't necessarily have a rock-solid definition, but generally, they are accounts created to post original memes or, more commonly, reposted memes. They exist all across social media, from Facebook to Instagram to Twitter and beyond. Sometimes meme accounts can have a focus or theme, and, in the case today, the account handle tells you everything you need to know about the content. We are talking about the viral sensation, Gripping Foods with Force. Self-proclaimed to be the worst account on Twitter, the concept was simple, yet contagious enough to gain traction and spread. They posted images of people's hands, gripping food with force. On July 4th, 2020, the account was created on Twitter, and their first post was an image of a man's hand hovering above a bowl of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, just squeezing the shit out of a fistful of cereal with milk and spoon caught up in the mix. Within nine minutes of posting the content, people were already responding to the tweet with their own bewilderment, encouragement, and recommendations for future content. Bruh, you do be grabbing that dough. Can you grip a cheeseburger from McDonald's? How does one manage such grip? It had gone viral, with over 2,000 retweets and thousands of likes. This account is gonna be 50k followers by the end of July. The account followed up with another tweet an hour later recognizing the success, saying, quote, Can't wait until Thanksgiving when someone chokes a whole ass turkey for this account. The image of the man squeezing the cereal wasn't their own original content, and it seems as though the account, Gripping Foods with Force, was actually inspired by another tweet that was posted just a few hours earlier by the user, at SneakExe. The tweet was an image of a Chick-fil-A sandwich in front of a monitor showing a stream of famous Twitch streamer Pokimane, with the text, quote, Nothing like watching my queen at Pokimane LOL and eating some Chick-fil-A on a Friday afternoon. Sunglasses emoji, smiling emoji. The sandwich was of course mangled, with toppings dripping out of it and the poster's thumb stuck directly through the middle. The Gripping Foods with Force account retweeted this image and the account was rolling. There was a clear path forward, more content of people gripping foods with force. And luckily enough, there was already plenty on the internet to choose from, and hordes of enthralled fans who wanted to submit their own grip for the account owner to highlight and repost. Soon enough, there was a gripping foods with force Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. There's even a subreddit and Facebook community group where users can submit their own grips rather than submit to the main account admin to filter and only repost the chosen content. At the time of recording this, about three months later from that first post in July, the account has grown to have well over a million followers across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. There's no doubt that they've caught lightning in a bottle. Or, well, in a Twitter handle. And I'm not the only one to notice. In August, Amy Levitt posted an article for the food blog The Takeout, 
called, quote, Are You Tough Enough to Contribute to the Greatest Social Media Project? And in September, Bettina McAlintal posted, quote, The grotesque satisfaction of gripping foods with force for Vice's food section, Munchies. Why is this account so successful? What was it like having a meme account have such a meteoric rise? I sought to find out, so I DM'd the account owner, and they declined an interview. So I reached out to the account owners for the official Gripping Foods with Force Judge Association. This is an account that comments on the Instagram posts of the Gripping Foods with Force account with scores out of 10. I'm Lenny, and that's Alex. We run the official food gripping judges. It's a sub account from the main uh, gripping foods with Forest one. We have a ton of judges. We have like, I'd say close to 150 now. This interview is from back in September. And as of the recording of this episode a month later, the community has grown to be almost 750 members. The main hub, of course, is a Discord where the posts get sent, evaluated, and scored. There's also a ton of carrying on and posting memes, of course. Some of them live in Europe, some of them live in Australia, some mm -hmm. in Asia, so... And not all of them are active all the time, but yeah, they're the ones that are in charge of the voting process, and we just kind of take their score and then we publish it. You know, uh, most of the time it's not all 150, you know, sometimes it'll be like 30. How did you guys get started with this account? Initially, uh, Alex started it. And then um, he was like, hey, Lenny, could you help me like manage this account and everything? And I was like, yeah. And then it started to grow and we did not expect it to grow like at all. Like we were just like bullshitting. When I started the account, I was just doing it as a joke. Okay, I can't even remember how long ago it was, but like I, I, with my personal account before this existed, I like rated one of the posts in a similar style to what you see now with our account. And people seem to really like it. Uh, but the, after a few posts, you started seeing the like the copycats, and I was like, "Well, how about like have them join me instead of just having a bunch of people doing the same thing?" People just saw my the account's name, you know, official food gripping judges, and they were like, "What? There's judges now? Like, there's a whole thing now?" People just started like naturally coming in. At first, when I started the account, it was just me. Like, I pretended there was a whole team of judges, but it was just me doing all the reviews and I had to recruit people but then it just kind of snowballed and it did its own thing now like it's hard to keep up with all the requests we get to like join us when Lenny joined me it was like how many followers did we have it was probably 1000 mm -hmm. right yeah yeah now we're like close to well I mean we're almost gonna hit 6000 now so what has it been like working with the actual owner of the account we didn't like message them. We never like established any form of contact. Up until like this one day where like they just pinned our comment and we made a post about it and everything because like immediately we after they pinned our comment. Don't even bullshit. Yeah. Immediately, right, Lenny? After they pinned mm -hmm. our comment, they followed us. And then they started messaging us and shit. Yeah, and now we like occasionally message back and forth. A big portion of us, like both the admins and the judges, have notifications on for the main page. And as soon as the page makes a post, I send the link over to the server. We have a channel for uh, discussing the like the pictures, and we have a channel for voting. So I give them like five minutes to discuss, sometimes seven, sometimes it varies. But I give them some time to discuss what they think, count everyone's votes, uh, I draw an average, take everyone's opinions, kind of make a, a Frankenstein monster out of their opinions. The judges think this and that and that and that, and that's the official score. And then I post it on the comments. How do you guys come up with rules for the judging criteria? There's the lighting, there's the strength, there's the burst, there's the location, there's the grip stance. And sometimes we take into account food to hand ratio. It's just kind of like a combination of, of what things you like about the picture if that makes any sense like what what you notice what are your favorite posts did y'all see the um the mozzarella stick one? Oh, that was cool oh yeah that one was all right <laughs> yeah that one was funny after a certain point the format of the account settled on a two image dialogue an open palm holding half an order of mozzarella sticks clearly sitting at a restaurant 
The second photo, the mozzarella sticks have been squeezed with such force that there is no distinguishable individual, only a greasy ball. This before and after works especially well in Instagram, where you cannot see the second photo and have to swipe to see it. There's this moment of suspense where you know what's going to happen to the food, but how? That is where the magic is. I think what makes it such a success is the kind of the shock factor. I mean, because where else do you see that? People don't like do that. <laughs> out in the public you know so it's like i think just seeing something so different so it's intriguing if you will out there i love that and like people are really pushing the envelope now what was it just today they post like a whole pizza yeah yeah it was an entire pizza like i i saw that people just keep going like for crazier stuff like d did you see the one where a guy went for like an, an entire chicken A certain part of me is like, I love this. Like, this is so odd and so fascinating. But then I'm seeing like the whole pizza. I'm like, I really hope you ate that. You know, like yeah, Did see the sushi one. Yeah, yeah I saw that one. Whole like tray that's of sushi. a waste of food right there. Oh, and like obviously, like half of it fell on the floor. Yeah, and like see, that's the thing with with these posts. Like, I don't know if I like like people wasting food just for like for this. You know. I, I really like them. They're like they're, you know, they're funny. They're out there. But I mean, it's easy. To, it's easy enough to say like, oh, it's just a donut. Like it's just a, like a box of sushi. But then you think about all the people that have done this, <laughs> and all the submissions that haven't been posted, and then. I mean, you start to really wonder if like, it's, it's a wise thing, you know. And Alex is right. There are an incredible amount of people who have submitted their own grips to the account that never saw their content get reposted. We have no way of knowing how many get submitted to Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. But if, for example, we take a look at the Reddit and Facebook community group you can see that there are thousands of pictures of people destroying their own food. Just the Facebook group alone, with 26,000 members, averages 2.9 thousand posts a day. And not every post is tinged with the same kind of wanton destruction that comes from eviscerating an entire can of cranberry sauce having the contents get wasted across the floor. Some posts from the community are more lighthearted and play off of the concept, like showing an infant squeezing their food in a tight little baby grip or somebody lightly pressing down on a gummy burger to subvert your expectations. But the content that is most shocking does the best, and gets the most reaction out of people. This drives the meta towards one-upsmanship and destruction. The main Facebook account for gripping foods with force is listed as a food and beverage business. Because of this, people can list their own reviews of the page. Many reviews are people exalting the content as groundbreaking and important, or as one user put it, Gripping food with force is a page that not only grips food with force, but grips the viewer's attention as well. Never has a five-finger strangle changed the world in such a way that this page does. And for that, this page should not only be respected, but celebrated. One of the leading voices of our generation. However, in the reviews, there are many people outraged and disgusted at the waste of food and the meaninglessness of it all. Lazy content, wasteful. Creatively bankrupt, a real one-trick pony without the pony. This is just wasteful. And is getting even worse since a group has been created. Now everybody is wasting food to get internet points. And while this is a Facebook page, it then trends towards the chaos that I feel is inevitable these days. Food's being wasted either way, idiot. If not this, then every time you're full, or at fast food places. You're a horrible person and have single-handedly brought forth the apocalypse via your videos. 
You snowflakes gonna complain about literally everything. You are why we can't have nice things. I hope you go to every restaurant today and demand they don't waste so much food. You activist you. Please, to waste food is a great travesty. We cannot condone this. I have to say that I see validity in both sides. Food waste is a colossal concern, globally and in America specifically. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, or USDA, and the National Resources Defense Council, NRDC, 30 to 40 percent of the entire food supply is wasted. This equates to one pound of food per person per day, as of data from 2017. This occurs for a variety of reasons, including farm waste and blemished crops, economic considerations and the varying costs of crops, waste at grocery stores and overstocking, massive discard and overabundant portions at restaurants, and household rot. Some of these issues have been recently heightened due to the coronavirus pandemic. According to a Politico article in April of 2020, quote, tens of millions of pounds of American-grown produce is rotting in fields as food banks across the country scramble to meet a massive surge in demand. A two-pronged disaster that has deprived farmers of billions of dollars in revenue while millions of newly jobless Americans struggle to feed their families. Looking at data from the U.S. Hunger Relief Organization, Feeding America, quote, Due to the effects of the coronavirus pandemic, more than 54 million people may experience food insecurity in 2020, including a potential 18 million children. And even before the pandemic, hunger was an issue for many. The projected 54 million people in 2020 increased from 2019, where more than 35 million people in the United States struggled with hunger, as stated in the USDA's latest Household Food Insecurity in the United States report. And looking at the numbers from a 2017 NRDC report on food waste, in 2015, 43% of all food waste happened at the household level. And while the meme page didn't exist at this point, gripping food with force in a destructive, non-reclamatory manner would add to this, the largest sector of wasted food in America. But on the other side of the issue, this is a historically difficult time for people across the globe, not just in terms of hunger, but also mental health. From a literal pandemic to increased partisanship, unchecked capitalism, rising levels of hate crimes, massive unemployment, inexcusable economic disparity, a stark reckoning with America's racist past and racist present, and careening towards the point of no return for our planet's environmental issues. It's just a lot to handle and deal with right now. Memes and content like gripping food with force help ease the day-to-day -day dumpster fire we find ourselves living within. Having to wake up every day with some new awful development and having to stare into the face of a bleak and uncertain future is untenable. Memes help ease our concerns through escapism, and humor has historically been used to discuss traumatic subject matter in a non-traumatic, sensitive way. In a time where anxiety is skyrocketing, many are driven to check their Instagram feeds rather than the news in the morning, and find respite in the humor, the absurd, the satirical, and the cathartic all of which can be seen in a Gripping Foods with Force post, where someone palms seven packets of liquid creamer and squeezes so outrageously hard with forearm veins bulging that half and half jets off in a dramatic display of chaos. For example, another recent post shows two people in a bathroom. The first photo shows the victim of the impending grip, a packet of McDonald's mayonnaise. The second photo shows the grip, and how the mayonnaise is shot out of the packet and fanned out towards a mirror. 
a mirror which shows two people, smiling and rosy-cheeked, veiled by aerosolized mayo, obviously having a great time, despite the mayonnaise cleanup they have to do. So where do we end up with this? Is one person exploding a packet of applesauce through sheer might going to significantly contribute to food scarcity for impacted people? No. But I can't really argue against it contributing to a larger, systemic problem. Of course, the legwork of sustainability needs to be done by our government, corporations, farmers, and restaurants. But should we, as individuals, resign to nihilism in the face of overwhelming waste due to capitalism? No. It's ridiculous to think that others' actions absolve you of any personal responsibility. Now, on the other hand, is it worth wasting a bit of food as an act of joy? To create some content and potentially bring a smile to someone's face who might really need it today. I think it can be, but there's a degree of ethics and personal responsibility. And there's even more to be said in finding solace within a community. The Discord server for the official judging team has brought together almost a thousand people that chat daily, share memes and music, support each other, and engage in a common activity. Themed meme pages that share community-submitted content offer a welcoming environment that, unlike the world we find ourselves in, does not discriminate as long as you have some visceral and explosive grip. Want to go squeeze some food in a fabulously absurd way to engage with the community? Go for it. But maybe if you're just doing it for shock value of wasting something, don't. It depends. I, I don't know. It's... It's not a clear-cut thing. It's not black or white, but this murky gray we always find ourselves within. And who am I to say what people should and should not do? What I do know is that gripping foods with force is hilarious, and the interplay between the content, the community, and the judges is just delightful. And it does seem that by the type of content selected by the main account, they don't just want to see the most wasteful go big or go home content. As of writing this, the most recent post is somebody holding some grapes in their hand in the first shot, and then a bottle of wine in the second. So the meta, or the culture around the content, is evolving, and I encourage everybody to check it out for yourself. So if you if you guys want to find us on Instagram, we're um, at official uh, food gripping judges. Oh, I guess uh, dash in between each of those words. So uh, yeah. Underline, yeah. Underline. Why did I say dash? <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Official, add official underline food, underline gripping, underline judges. Yeah, it's a pretty long name, but yeah, you can find us there. Um, the link to our Discord server is right there on our bio, so you can just click it. It never expires. You can join whenever you want. Uh, you guys automatically can become community judges. And if you guys want to become like certified uh, judges, which you know those judges are the ones that give the official scores uh you can just like apply for an interview and we'll, we'll interview as soon as we can <laughs> that's perfect no that's awesome and i'll i'll cut it up of course so it's, it's all gonna sound seamless So much thanks goes out to Alex and Lenny for making the time to talk with me. In the show notes, I've included links to all the articles and research I mentioned. And if you want to see the carnage for yourself, links to Gripping Food with Force and the official judge page. Much love and thanks go out to everybody who listened and contributed to this story. This episode was written by me, Wesley Letham, and produced by Sound Service which is also me. Production and story support from Savannah Jubik. Music provided by Kevin McLeod. I also create content on my Instagram, at Verbally Described Memes. That account started out as flat, straightforward reads of memes that I came across on the internet or that people would share with me, but now has evolved into documentary-esque deep dives into the constituent parts of modern memes and their origins. So, check it out. Try not to focus on the joke as much as 
why it's there, which is what you're already doing. So just like what I'm trying to say is you're on the right track. Don't steer away from it. Right, because if you focus on the joke itself, like that's horribly unfunny. Yeah. It, once you start talking about memes, it becomes so painfully unfunny. Right, it's like uh, the meme kid. <laughs>